morning guys. Uh, today I am going to explain you on uh, bore shift. So this bore shift uh, basically it will explain how a hemoglobin molecule is going to release oxygen in peripheral tissue and how it is going to bind to oxygen in the lungs. And in doing so, the hemoglobin molecule is going to carry uh, protons and some amount of carbon dioxide from peripheral tissues and it is going to release protons and carbon dioxide basically in the lung. Let us understand how this hemoglobin is going to do this job. So let us see the peripheral tissue first. So here is the peripheral, let us write peripheral tissue here, peripheral uh, tissue. So as you all know that partial pressure of oxygen in peripheral tissue, that is uh, PO2 in peripheral tissue, it will be between 20 to 40 millimeter of HD millimeter of mercury. So, here is your uh, red blood cell carrying uh, say all right hemoglobin here. This is a hemoglobin molecule. Hemoglobin molecule. So, it carries uh, four oxygen. Four oxygen molecules. Hemoglobin carrying four oxygen molecules. So, as it reaches the peripheral tissue, so in the peripheral tissue, it's going to release these four oxygen. Generally, it releases two oxygen molecules. Uh, whenever the partial pressure of oxygen is 20 to 40 millimeter of HG, it basically half desaturation occurs. But for our understanding, let's do the 100% desaturation, means four oxygen molecules are released into the peripheral tissue. I'll repeat that. Under normal conditions, between 20 to 40 millimeter of HG, there will be around two molecules of oxygen will be released, not four. Okay. Just for our easier understanding, we are releasing all the four oxygen molecules into the peripheral tissue. So, because of the low partial pressure of oxygen, like 20 to 40 millimeter of HD, so the oxygen un unloading is happening. But it is not just the uh, partial uh, 20 to 40 millimeter of HD partial pressure, which is helping in the unloading of oxygen. There is something else which will also help in the unloading of oxygen. So, what is that? So basically in the peripheral tissue, as you know, like peripheral tissues are active tissues, so they will conduct TCA cycle, that is Krebs cycle. So Krebs cycle. So one of the byproducts of Krebs cycle is carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide is going to diffuse into the red blood cell. So let me write red blood cell here. So a little bit bigger and here is the red blood cell. Red blood cell, so your carbon dioxide is getting into this red blood cell, carbon dioxide gets into the red blood cell, the red this is RBC. Now within the cytoplasm of red blood cell, carbon dioxide is combining with water molecules to form H2CO3, H2CO3, okay, that is carbonic acid. This carbonic acid is spontaneously dissociated into H plus and HCO3 minus. H plus and HCO3 minus means protons and the bicarbonate. So these protons basically they will go, go and protonate twisted in the residue. That's what it, these protons will do. So the protons will protonate twisted in the residue. They will go and bind to hemoglobin molecules. Basically two protons will go and bind to twisted in molecules in a hemoglobin and that will help to release four oxygen molecules. Four oxygen molecules will be released. So, to, to get these two protons, let's balance the equation. So, two carbon dioxide enters into cytoplasm, combining with two water molecules and two carbonic acid will form two H plus and two H2O3 minus. Two bicar bicarbonates are formed there. Now, what will happen to this bicarbonate? So, bicarbonate is basically the carbon dioxide. So, bicarbonate will be moving out. So, this bicarbonate is coming out of red blood cell into the blood stream. HCO3 minus is now it is present in the blood, enters into blood. Now this is a negative charge which is coming out of the red blood cell to maintain the charge equality so chloride is getting in. Whenever carbon dioxide, sorry, bicarbonate is coming out, chloride is getting into the red blood cell. This is called as chloride shift. Now your hemoglobin molecule in the peripheral tissue, it has released four molecule of oxygen for every two proton binding and two bicarbonates are coming out. So, 
This is how 90% of your carbon dioxide, 90% of carbon dioxide is carried back to the lungs in the blood in the form of bicarbonate. So, 10% of the carbon dioxide directly will bind to hemoglobin molecule. Particularly, the amino terminal side of the hemoglobin molecule will be binding with carbon dioxide that is only 10%. So, 10% of your peripheral tissue carbon dioxide is carried by directly binding to hemoglobin that is called as carbaminohemoglobin. 90% of the carbon dioxide is carried in the form of bicarbonate. Now let's take your, this RBC back to the lungs because venous return will occur your peripheral tissue, venous return. So it is basically going back to the lungs. So in the lungs what will happen? So here thyroid lung, as you all know that PO2 of lung, PO2 of lung is 90 to 100 millimeter of HC. Now what will happen to your RBC? Let's write the RBC here in the lungs, red blood cell. Okay, so the hemoglobin, now your hemoglobin, it is coming from peripheral tissue, so the lungs. So within the lungs, so basically your hemoglobin is having these two protons, 2 H plus, and also it is having carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon dioxide, okay, and that's 10% of carbon dioxide, which is brought from there. So, now the partial pressure of oxygen is 90 to 100 millimeter of Hg, so at this high partial pressure of oxygen, so your oxygen is going to get in into the red, uh, red blood cell and binding to hemoglobin. So now oxygen, four molecules of oxygen will bind to hemoglobin. So when the four molecules of oxygen will bind to hemoglobin, basically hemoglobin is undergoing a conformational change and that gets into R state of hemoglobin, that is relaxed state of hemoglobin or state of hemoglobin. Whereas here in the peripheral tissue, when the oxygen molecule is released, when the protons are binding, hemoglobin is getting into T state, T state of hemoglobin. Okay, anyway, so now your hemoglobin is getting into R state and because of this conformational change, so the protons that are bound to the molecules, so they will be released, these protons will be released into the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, your bicarbonate which is carried in the blood, here is the blood bicarbonate. So, this bicarbonate now it enters into red blood cell, red blood cell in, the, in, in the peripheral circulation. So, the bicarbonate that is coming in the blood, now it is entering in HCO3- minus, enters into the red blood cell. At the same time, chloride is coming out. So, this now balances the negative charge. Previously in peripheral tissue what we have seen? When the bicarbonate is coming out, chloride was moving in. Now in the lungs, bicarbonate is getting into the red blood cell, chloride is moving out of red blood cell. Okay. What will happen to this bicarbonate? Bicarbonate will combine with these two protons and will form H2CO3, that is carbonic acid. Now the H2CO3 will be, let me increase the size of red blood cell here, so that uh, we will I'll write uh, the complete reaction. There is a red blood cell. H2CO3 will be spontaneously broken down into CO2 and H2O water. Okay. Now the CO2 will be diffusing outside, it diffuses out and it will be exhaled. CO2 is exhaled. This is how and whenever the oxygen is inhaled, this is the inhaled oxygen. Inhaled. We inhale oxygen and that is the oxygen which is binding to hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide, we are, which is released from the red blood cell, we are exhaling it out. Okay, this is how we are. Oxygen is brought from the lungs and released in the peripheral tissue, whereas the carbon dioxide, which is the byproduct of Krebs cycle, is taken from the peripheral tissue and it is released in the lungs. This entire effect we call it as Bohr effect, or the it is also called as Bohr shift. I hope you understood the concept. Thank you for watching.